Hi guys, welcome back to another video. I wanted to do a middle grade book recommendation video sometime in the month of March because um, I know there's been a group of you guys on booktube who have been doing a middle grade March which is really cool. I didn't participate this month but I still wanted to share some of my recommendations. Now when I was looking through the books that I would recommend um, I came across like there's just too many right I gotta narrow it down so I'm going to eliminate one that I think it would be more YA well that one's kind of YA too should I include the YA ones I don't know but I'm definitely going to exclude graphic novels because I think I could do a separate video just recommending graphic novels. I think that would be more fun. Um, okay, so I guess we'll just see. We'll just see what happens. Maybe a couple YA ones slip in there. Um, I'll let you know if I think it's on the fence or can fit both. But yeah, I guess we will just get into it then. Um, okay. So I would recommend Cracks in the Sidewalk by Crystal Bowman. Um, I believe she has a number of these poetry books for kids. Um, I can't remember what the other one has been called. Cracks in the Sidewalk and something, is it the Attic one? Something in the Attic? Stair stairs in the Attic? What? I'm not sure should have done my research but I don't own that one so um anyway yes this is just a poetry book for kids but the charm and there's no color and usually that's a problem for me um but the charm in these poems they're really short they have excellent rhythm they're very cute um I would just highly recommend this kind of book for your kids. Nothing, there's no serious topic in here or anything. Um, so it's all just kind of fun. Um, yeah, I would recommend that one. I don't think, I don't think you guys can see this high. I'm not really sure. I don't have a viewfinder, but um, yes, we'll go with that one. I also want to mention um, not this version. This is kind of just a placeholder on my shelf for when I can find the actual version that I like. So the one that I like is by um, T.H. White and it is called, ah, okay so even in the front it says suggested by the original story The Sword in the Stone by T.H. White. But it, The Sword in the Stone by T.H. White has a second name to it. I can't remember what it is. But anyway, um, yes, the original tale. I loved the book. It was so fun and I think that's something important because I know a lot of middle grade, especially in like school curriculum, I know that a lot of it is trying to teach something or trying to um, allow the child to discover something about themselves or, you know, it's all meant to be teachable but sometimes you just need some fun right so this is a really fun story um going along with that now some people could probably find teachable moments in this book but I would suggest the I have a hard time with this book series because it is considered middle grade Though I don't know that I would recommend it for middle grade. I think I would prefer, if I would recommend this to someone, I would prefer to recommend it to someone a little bit older than middle grade. Um, I don't even know what the age bracket for middle grade is really, but I would do more like preteen, teen is what I would say for these ones. Um, just not because of anything like too severe, but just a, a few things on there that are like in there that are like, I don't know, I don't know. It 
doesn't encourage the conversation that should be had about those issues. Does that make sense? Maybe not. Um, but I really liked it as an adult. So we will continue on. Uh, this is my favorite shelf if you haven't figured it out. So most of them will come off of this section which is my middle grade section but there are some that I have listed over there that I don't own. So um, Artemis Fowl by Owen Colfer. Uh, I always pronounce it Awen, but it's Owen Colfer. Artemis Fowl is one of those fun books like I think middle grade should be. Um, yeah, Artemis is a troublemaker. He starts off somewhat unlikable, although he does have a quality about him that you wanna you wanna keep following what he's doing and what he's getting into. Um, there is a fairy world in this world. Actually, this is meant to be our world, just way in the future. That also includes a fairy world. <laughs> I don't know. Um, so yeah, it's about him. His name is Artemis. Uh, he's a human. And um, this fairy, her name is Holly Short. She is kind of like, kind of like in the military of the fairies, sort of. Um, but anyway, that's a fun adventure. And I'm three books into yeah, three. Three books into that series at the moment, and I'm enjoying it. Um, the next one I would recommend would be The Water Babies by Charles Kingsley. This one is, to me, the nonsense you feel when you read Alice in Wonderland, which I also have here. Um, that kind of like frivolous nonsense, just what is happening? Um, there's a lot of that in this book, and I find it charming. So, yeah, I can't really remember. It's been a while since I've read this one, but it takes place far in the past, and it follows a young boy who is mistreated and neglected and orphaned, and he doesn't really belong anywhere or feel he belongs anywhere, and then he ends up somehow falling or jumping, jumping into a stream and discovers water babies. Yeah, so it's, it's fun. Uh, I would recommend that one. And then, got a few more from my shelf. I would recommend Island of the Blue Dolphins. This one is less fun. There's not a lot of fun in this book, but it is a really interesting journey that, what's her name again? Karana, that Karana goes on because she is left alone on this island and has to survive and fend for herself. And uh, she's just a young girl who, she grew up on the island, so she's not like completely unfamiliar with her uh, surroundings, but she does have to fend for herself and survive somehow. So I would recommend that one. Then we're back to nonsense. <laughs> uh, Fortunately, The Milk by Neil Gaiman. This one was recommended to me by Chantel and I am thankful that she did recommend it because it is it is fun. I, I really liked this book and I, I look forward to when I can reread it. Um, they have illustrations here and there and it's about this little family. Uh, starts off in the morning the kids don't, they discover they don't have milk for their cereal, so the dad says, I'll go to the store and get some milk. So he leaves, he takes forever to come back, and then when he finally does come back with, I don't remember, I can't remember if he actually did get milk or if he forgot the milk, but um, he comes back with this way outrageous story that is so unbelievable, and it's like, are you being serious dad but he's like so serious but he's like this happened and he's just like totally jazzed about it and um it's fun it's fun 
And then the last one from my shelf that I will recommend is of course one of my favorites. If you know anything about my 2020 reading, you know I discovered The Princess and the Gollum by George MacDonald and this is such a great story. I reread it again this past month and I love it and I can't wait to reread it again. Um, you always know it's a it hits the sweet spot when you want to reread it after you've just reread it. Um, so this one uh, is about a princess um, and they live in a land where there are goblins and they kind of the goblins and the humans kind of coexist but they sort of hate each other also and the goblins will um, torture the humans not like in the way that adults think of torture but like in silly childish ways of torture um, but anyway she there's a whole story I don't even know how to describe this there's two it feels like there's two little storylines going on at the same time so she she gets lost in the castle because the castle is so huge and she ends up in a room and there's this old lady there but a young lady an old lady that looks young whatever um and she tells her she is her great 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 grandmother and so she's super excited that she found her great 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 grandmother in the castle and then she leaves the room she goes to tell her nursemaid and her nursemaid's like there's nobody there and her she tells her dad the king and he's like there's nobody living in the castle what are you talking about um so yeah there's that and then there's also uh, a second storyline with the goblins and a boy named curdy and that leads into there is a sequel called um is it the princess and curdy or is it irene and curdy because her name is irene I can't recall but that one I didn't love as much as this one but I I mean I would recommend you read both if you're gonna read one and then also George MacDonald did also write Light Princess which is another I think that one is more like it's a nonsense middle grade but it does have I mean I think that one too I think Princess and the Goblin has an allegory to it and I think that's how George MacDonald has wrote these. I don't know if he has any more. I should really look into it because I've loved these. The Princess and the Goblin and the Light Princess. I don't have that physical copy, but I would recommend it as well. So now I'm going to look at my list here. Um, there's a few more that I would like to mention. The Silver Gate, which is a... It, it is a fantasy. It's about this town and it takes place way back in the Middle Ages and if you're born a certain way um, then you are expect like if you give birth to a baby and the baby exhibits these certain attributes um, it's expected that you have to kill the baby because um, I don't think it really talks about it in like this blunt of a way because it's a middle grade but anyway um because if the baby lives then it's gonna bring terrible stuff on upon the whole town and so this one woman has a baby that does um reflect these attributes and she does not want her baby to die so she kind of steals her baby away and they live outside of town nobody knows really what has happened but out of sight out of mind kind of thing and the little girl grows up and she's about 10 years old and she does have an older brother who takes care of her when the mother dies and then they have an adventure because uh, the boy has to protect the young girl now that the town's people and uh, yeah they're starting to find out that she exists and she's probably what's been causing issues in town so the boy takes his little sister and they go on the run so i would recommend that one that one deals with some a little bit more heavy topics because it does deal with the girl some of the attributes that come along with i can't remember what they call it when you're born with this but um some of the attributes are um, a little bit delayed mentally delayed so 
uh, the older brother, when it's just the two of them, he sometimes has a hard time like communicating things to her in a way that she understands what he means and what he wants. And so there's a little bit of friction there. And so, yeah, I do recommend it. It does deal with a little bit of a hard topic there. Um, but it, I think, is done well. So, moving on. Um, the Insignificant Life of a Cactus. This one is about a young girl who moves across the states um, and she has, was born without arms and that has never been an issue in her life because her friends just grew up with her without arms and everybody just knows her from a baby and, and she's just the girl that doesn't have arms and it's no big deal. But when she moves um, across the country of course, all other kids are gonna see this young girl without arms and they're gonna have questions and they're gonna like, you know, maybe look at her a little differently, maybe treat her a little differently. So it's all of that. Plus she ends up um, connecting with the one boy in school who has Tourette's. And so they kind of connect on that level where they're, they're treated a bit differently. And yeah, I really, I think that's a good book to read too, so I would recommend that one. There's one that's a Christmas book, and it's The Legend of Holly Claus. So it follows, um, it's been a couple of years now since I've read that one, but um, it follows Holly Claus, who is the daughter of Santa Claus. Um, Santa Claus and his wife were not able to have children or something, and so they wished for a baby, and somehow they were given Holly as a when she was a baby um, and so she grew up uh, at the North Pole with Santa Claus and then she decides I can't remember what her her whole journey is but she leaves the North Pole to to do something I can't remember what it is but um, yeah that's a cute Christmas one it's it's a thicker one though so be prepared for that also the wild robot that one has a, a sequel as well. So there's two in that one, and that one follows um, just this, it's in the science fiction world where robots are basically delivered to everybody. Everyone has a robot. However, in transit, this one robot gets lost and ends up on an island and has to, uh, I don't know, like, I don't wanna say survive because she doesn't need to eat or go to the bathroom or drink or, you know, she's a robot. Um, but she ends up making friends with the animals and and it's very sweet. There's uh, an element of found family in that book, so that is cool. And yeah, it's just, it's just a really creative book idea. So I would recommend that one. Now the last two, I'm gonna quickly wrap this video up. The last two are ones that I think might be more YA, but depending on your child's maturity level, I don't know. So The False Prince by Jennifer A. Nielsen, that is a whole, what's it called, The Ascendance series, I believe. I loved the whole series, every book I loved. So it's, it follows this boy, Sage, who is growing up at uh, in an orphanage, and then this this man comes to the orphanage one day, and he, um, adopts five of them. I say adopts because he's not like a father figure or anything. He's more like, um, kind of like an owner, sort of. He doesn't treat them as slaves per se, but he, but he, he abuses them, not physically. Well, phys eh. he's just not a good guy. We'll just say that. Um, and he has ulterior motives for adopting these five boys. So yeah, I'll just leave it there. It has to do with overthrowing a kingdom. Um, so yeah, that one, I, yeah, I don't really know if it's, I think it's more YA, but again, you decide based on your child's maturity, as well as the Knights of Aerith Trey by Chuck Black. These ones were recommended to me by Celestria and they are so good. I'm not finished the series yet, but what I have read has been excellent. So I definitely recommend those. 
every book follows a different night. Um, so it's medieval and it's definite. It's very, very strong biblical allegory um, parallels there. You can totally, like it's, it's, it's not meant to be a hidden parallel. It's supposed to be obvious. So um, I definitely recommend those and those might touch on some harder topics too. So that's why I think those ones might be a little bit more YA, but yeah, depends again. So yeah, I think I've chatted your ear off about middle grade books. There is a handful that I would recommend. Um, I don't know when I will do another one like this. I doubt I will read enough middle grade to do another one like every March, but maybe every other year I can do an updated one. We'll see. Um, yeah, let me know what your favorite middle grade books are in the comments below. I'd love to hear your recommendations. Um, let me know also if you have read any of these and if you agree or disagree on any of my um, thoughts. So yeah, thank you guys so much for stopping by and watching. I hope you have a lovely day and I will definitely see you in the next one. Bye!